Amen. If you would stand with me, amen, to the book of Acts, chapter 26. Acts, chapter 26, verses 28 and 29. When you get there, say amen. If you're not there yet, say wait. I'll wait on you. Acts 26, verse 28 and 29. Amen. I'm going to tell y'all ahead of time, amen, if y'all not here with me, I may shout and be done before y'all ever get the introduction. <laughs> amen. I need about 12 good minutes, and I'm going to be out of your way. Acts chapter 26, verse 28 and 29, there you find these words recorded. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me today might become both almost and altogether such as I am, except for these chains. If you don't mind, I want to preach from this thought, almost saved, but fully hell bound. Almost saved, but fully hell bound. Four things I want to share with you before I take my seat. First, let me tell you or let me tell or tell me about yourself. Secondly, tell me about how God saved you. Thirdly, let me tell you almost just ain't good enough. And last, let me tell you, make it your mission to live for him. Almost saved, but fully hell bound. One of the things we need to understand is this. I heard it said best, almost is only good in horseshoes and grenades. In other words, you can almost get the target on a horseshoe and still score some points. You can almost hit your target but get close enough with a grenade and still obtain your objective. But how many of you know that you will not make it to heaven almost? Preach Terrell DeMond Davis. You won't almost be saved. In fact, some of y'all need to understand you ain't even almost pregnant. Either you is or you ain't. But some of us have this mind frame that as long as I show up at church that I'm almost saved, that I'm going to get in by a curve grading. But how many of you know that unless you have given your life to Jesus and made him your Lord and Savior, you are not reserved for a seat? in heaven and you need to understand you need to get fully saved while you're not yet fully on your way to hell and in other words you got to make up your mind either you on God's side or you are against God there is no middle ground there's no gray area and some of you need to identify just coming to church won't get you into heaven Oh, I'm almost through preaching already. Give me about 10 more good minutes. I'm going to be out of your way. When, whenever we come into contact with folk, listen, quit trying to tell folk about Genesis through Revelation. Quit trying to tell folk about Peter and Paul and John and Barnabas. Quit trying to tell folk about the old and the minor prophets. Quit trying to tell folk about all the miracles. First, tell them about yourself. Ah, how you win folks to Christ, it is through personal interaction. And the first thing I want to know is who are you? Before you damn me to hell, can you at least let me know your name? Let me know where you live at? Let me know where you came from? Before you tell me what I'm doing wrong, can I at least get to know who you are? Preach up in here to Rail Davis. And see, some of y'all are guilty of giving folks Roman road, but they don't know your name. And so you've got to be able to make yourself personable before you present the good news. That's why I keep falling on deaf ears, because they don't know you. Secondly, y'all ready for this? Tell them how God saved you. Uh, now, see, here's the problem we have in the church is that some of y'all don't want to tell the truth about where God found you at. Some of y'all don't want to tell the truth about the skeletons that are in your closet. Some of y'all don't want to tell the truth about the places that you've been. But how many of you know it is the testimony of how God brought you out of your mess that will resonate with somebody else? It is the fact that if God can save you, God can save them. And so you got to tell them how 
God saved you. It's right here in the text. It's in the text. Y'all ready? Paul first says, I am Paul. He gives his history of where he came from. But listen, then Paul tells the dirt on himself. How can y'all not win folks to Christ? It's because you got secrets that everybody know and you're the only one fool. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got secrets that everybody know, but you're the only one food. Let me help you out. If you got two or three baby daddies, everybody know it. So don't try to act like you're a big holy uh, missionary now. We can look at your kids and tell some ain't counting up. One of them six foot tall, one of them two foot tall. And so instead of trying to project this perfect persona, God said, I need you to be real and let them know where I found you. And don't try to puff up the story. Just tell the truth. If you got drunk every other day, just be honest. You was a drunk. Don't try to fix it up and say you was an alcoholic. Alcoholics go to meetings. You didn't go to no meetings. And so we tell folks where God found us, how God saved us. And how many of you know that God saves us all uniquely? Y'all still here? Y'all still here? Come on, come on, come on. All of us wasn't at the same place. Why? Because if all of us was at the same place, we'd have the same testimony, and we could only go testify to folk who have been in that same place. But how many of you know God needs some whoremongers? God needs some liars. God needs some cheaters. God needs some dope heads. God needs some drunks. And God needs some liars and some backbiters. And God needs some fakers and some shakers. And God needs all of us. And why? Because when he saves all of us, he now says to the enemy, look at my army. They can go talk to anybody because I got a soldier that's been where they at. So tell them how God saved you. Don't don't give them that. Don't give them that. Don't give them that touch by an angel story. Don't be talking about no no bright light shone all about you. Just tell them. Tell them the truth. Tell them that you had you had that big old bottle that was on that kitchen table and you drunk half of it and you just couldn't get drunk. And God came in and talked to you that day and tell them that same bottle sat on that kitchen table for six more weeks because God was delivering you from the, from the bottle. Tell them the whole truth. Tell them you came to church and you had on your Easter suit because it was Easter and you didn't have no intention of coming to God. But on that particular day, God sat next to you and said, are you tired yet? And you made up in your mind. I'm tired. Let me come to you. Tell them the truth of where God found you and how God saved you. And if they don't like it, that's their business. But that's my story. See, we, we, want, we want folk to like, to like, to be pleased with our story when the reality is, until you get delivered, you ain't pleased with your own story. Mm, preach up in here, Terrell DeMond. Have you ever had the moments where you looked at some pictures and got ashamed of where you came from and had to hide the pictures because you didn't want nobody else to know? But once you got delivered, you brought them pictures out because they are evidence that God turned you. Y'all don't want to talk to me. That God turned you around. Why? Because God said, I'll leave some evidence to not just remind them, but to remind you. You ain't all that. I've made you. So you got to be able to tell them how God saves you. I think I got six more minutes. Thirdly, listen, almost ain't good enough. For all y'all kids out there, almost remembering your parents' birthday ain't good enough. My birthday is July 19th. I'm hinting. Don't tell me happy birthday on July the 20th. That ain't good <laughs> enough. Mother's Day and Father's Day gifts that show up two days later ain't good enough. Father's Day is on the same day every year. You know what Sunday it is. Don't wait until Wednesday talking about, Daddy, I, I got busy. I ain't got busy raising you. I didn't get busy putting a roof over your head. 
I didn't get busy making sure that light switch worked every week. <laughs> so what am I saying? You need to understand that almost ain't good enough with your heavenly father. Praising him three days after he brought you through something just ain't good enough. And remembering him every once in a while just ain't good enough. How many of you know your father has taken care of you every moment of your life? You, you owe him a thank you. How many of you know he has put food on your table. You owe him a thank you. How many of you know if it wasn't for God who was on your side, you'd still be messed up. You owe him a thank you. Not when you get time. Somebody better stop by and say, Lord, I thank you right now. I just thought about it. I came to church without talking to you. I owe it to you. Almost ain't good enough. I ain't got to get here with y'all to talk to him. When you wake up in the morning, you ought to start talking to him. Lord, I thank you for another day. I could have died last night, but you woke me up. Oh, almost. Um, some of y'all almost praise him. Pastor, I was about to shout, but, but they stopped. Almost full. How many of you know if they don't ever hit a note on the piano, I got a song in my own. <laughs> Y'all going to make me shout by myself. I need to talk to some real folk that if don't nobody else say nothing, when you think about the goodness of the Lord and all he's done for you, there's a movement that starts to happen. Something on the inside starts moving and starts rocking and starts shaking. Jeremiah said, it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. Y'all got to excuse me. I just thought about where God found me at and I gotta tell him thank you that you didn't leave me where you found me and you didn't bring me halfway out is there anybody that can testify he brought you all all the way oh yeah oh almost saved but fully hell bound now y'all gotta get this y'all ready for this the last thing I want to share with you, and I got to get up out of here, I got to get across town to another church, is this. Make your mission to live for him. Ooh, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. I did not say make it your mission to be judgmental for him. I did not say make it your mission to try to guard the church for him. I did not say make it your mission to tell everybody what they doing wrong from him, but make your mission to serve and to live for him. Somebody asked me, Davis, why why you don't ever tell folk uh, that they going to hell? Uh, I said, I'm glad you asked. Uh, I can't tell you you're going to hell because uh, I don't have a vote uh, on who goes to hell. Uh, the Bible tells me uh, that we're going to all stand before the judgment bar uh, and we're going to read our story. Uh, and the Lord himself uh, is going to say to some folk, uh, y'all come on, uh, come on a little bit higher. Uh, and he's going to say to some other folk, uh, depart from me. Uh, for I know you not. It ain't my vote. So all I can tell you is how to get on the right side. Y'all missed that. I got to go now because I want to live for him. I want to share with everybody. You ain't got to go to hell. God didn't refuse you. God didn't deny you. If you go to hell, it's because you denied him. He says, whosoever will, let him come. I need to talk to some real folk uh, that can testify. Uh, you was a liar, uh, but you came. Uh, you was a dirty dog, uh, but you came. Uh, you was messed up, uh, but you came. Uh, and when you came, uh, you found the Lord uh, with his arms open wide. Uh, is there any real folk in here uh, that you came dirty? Uh, you came nasty, uh, and he still hugged you. Uh, you came messed up, uh, and he still embraced you. Uh, that's why I I love him because when you wouldn't hug me, God hugged me. When you wouldn't hug me, God held me close.
Ghost. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that ever had the Lord uh, to rock you to sleep uh, in your midnight hour? Uh, he'll rock you to sleep. Uh, I heard an old lullaby. Uh, now I lay uh, me down to sleep. Uh, I pray the Lord uh, my soul to keep. Uh, if I die uh, before I wake, uh, I pray the Lord uh, my soul to take. Uh, but I didn't got better now, uh, more mature now. Uh, and I just tell the Lord, uh, hold me. Uh, hold me close. Uh, don't let me go. Uh, hold me. Uh, hold me close. Uh, I got enemies around. <laughs> just hold me close. Uh, they're talking about me. Uh, just hold me close. Uh, I'm weary. Uh, just hold me close. Uh, and God will. Uh, God will rock you. Uh, he'll make you know uh, that nobody can take you. Uh, nobody can steal you. Uh, nobody can overpower you. Uh, I got to go now. Uh, but I'm fully, fully persuaded. For God, I live. And for God, I'll die. If you don't see me no more, just tell the folks at my funeral, I'm going up yonder. I'm going to a place where the wicked shall cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest. I'm going to a place with an all-day praise party that don't ever stop. Is there anybody there that's going to meet me in heaven? Is there anybody? anybody there uh, that know that you know uh, that if you don't wake up tomorrow uh, it's gonna be all right uh, if you don't see me no more uh, I'm gonna be all right because uh, God has uh, saved my soul uh, he wrote my name uh, in the Lamb's book of life uh, and you can talk about me uh, but you can't erase my name <laughs> roll your eyes uh, you can't erase my name uh, don't speak to me uh, you can't erase my name because uh, God uh, Cause God, God's got my back. I'll holler at y'all, but get your praise on. I'll holler at y'all, but get your shout on. Don't almost shout. Don't almost praise. Don't almost thank him. But get, get your shout out while there's breath in your body. Tell God, tell God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you!